Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. And today, finally, it's here. We're going to talk about the Scarlet Spider. We're going to talk about the Exile Returns and this four-issue crossover that took place in November and December of 1994 in the pages of Web of Spider-Man 118 and 119 and then crossed over into Spider-Man issues 52 and 53. And the writers on this book were uh, Howard Mackey, who wrote the Spider-Man issues, and Terry Cavanaugh, who wrote uh, the Web of Spider-Man issues. And the art on the Web of Spider-Man issues were done by Stephen Butler, and on the main Spider-Man book, they were done by Tom Lyle, who I was a huge fan of at this time in the comics. He was one of the reasons that I made sure every month, even if I couldn't afford the other Spider-Man titles, that I bought the main Spider-Man book because Tom Lyle's art was just so awesome to me. So, yeah, big fan. This story, like the ones we talked about when Joe was here, um, we talked about The Mace. And then after that, we talked about, uh, you know, uh, Knights of Vengeance. And those are all collected, along with this story here, in a book called Separation Anxiety, which is out there now. You can go buy it uh, at your local comic store. So please support local comic stores uh, all over. You know, there, a lot of them are closing these days, and it's a real bummer to see that as someone who's worked in four different ones in my lifetime. Uh, so if you can, uh, go to comicshoplocator.com and find the nearest comic store to you and see if they have Separation Anxiety, because this book is awesome. And this story, to me, is my favorite one in it. The next story, called Separation Anxiety, written by Howard Mackey, we'll get into that in a couple episodes from now, uh, but that's a really good story, too, and it deals a lot with, uh, you know, the five other symbiotes that were left over from the Lethal Protector storyline, and even in this story, we get a little setup to that, and a little, you know, uh, kind of payoff to what happened in the last one. In Knights of Vengeance, you know, we ended that story with a Venom thinking about going back to New York. And this is that story. He comes back to New York. He wants to, you know, put an end to Carnage, wants to make sure he doesn't, you know, you know, get out. And he also wants to get, maybe get some answers about the other symbiotes. So he's coming back to New York to kind of, you know, do that, essentially. So it's a, it's a nice little setup and, you know, payoff and everything between different writers and different books. And so in this one, he's coming back to New York and he's got, you know, wants to kill Carnage, that's his main thing, but he also wants to get some answers. And meanwhile, uh, in the comic books in Spider-Man at this time, Peter was going through a really rough time. Uh, you know, he found out his parents, the people that were back in his life, weren't actually his parents, and he had to deal with that drama and that fallout. Um, obviously, he made the deal with Venom, and Venom went off to San Francisco, now he's coming back to town. And then, of all things else, he also found out that his clone is still alive because many years ago, and we'll talk about this in the Scarlet Spider spinoff show that we'll do uh, very soon, um, and it was a couple issues of Spider-Man way back in the day where Spider-Man found out he was cloned uh, by a guy named Miles Warren, also known as the Jackal. And the Jackal had this like really creepy infatuation with him and also Gwen Stacy. He also cloned Gwen Stacy. And this guy was a real creep, a real weirdo, and definitely crossed a lot of weird lines uh, for a supervillain. And one of the things he did, though, he successfully cloned Peter Parker and put the two of them to fight each other. He didn't... He cloned him, knocked him out, I'm sorry, he knocked him out, then cloned him, and then when both, you know, the clone and the real Peter woke up, they were facing each other, and they didn't know what was going on, and they fought each other, and then the clone died, at seemingly of natural causes, uh, died during the whole altercation, and then the other villain showed up and stuff like that, uh, and then they had to try to stop Miles, and the clone died, and Spider-Man was like, well, I can't let this body, you know, anyone find this body, because it has my DNA, people will start asking questions about Peter Parker, uh, if I bury it, give him a proper burial, someone might dig him up one day. I literally have to dispose of this body, and I hate that I have to do that. So he goes around for a couple days trying not to do that and trying to figure out another solution and also hiding this body from people, and it just gets to the point where he almost gets caught a few times, and he's just like, I gotta do it. It's a horrible thing to do, but I gotta put drop this body down this smokestack into this furnace and burn it, and it's the only way I can be sure that no one will use it, it for anything uh, against me. And it's the only way I know that this, you know, this body can get, finally get rest in some way, too. So he does that, and he disposes of this body, and he has to live with that guilt for years, and he was pretty sure that that was the end of the story until this point in the comic books in 1994 when the clone showed back up. He came back to New York because he heard Aunt May was dying. She was sick, and she was in the hospital, and, uh, and he wanted to say goodbye to her, and he was trying to slip into New York and out before Peter Parker saw him, but unfortunately they ran into each other at the hospital, and things got really intense. So now Ben is kind of, you know, he teamed up with Spider-Man. They, they worked a few things out. Turns out Ben wasn't the actual clone, like not the one, or he is a clone, but he's not the one that was dropped down the smokestack. Obviously that one did burn up and die, but there were other clones of Spider-Man. So we'll learn more about Ben and stuff like that in his storyline. But in this one, in Exile Returns, he's, you know, he's lost. He doesn't know what to do. He had the, you know, altercation with Peter. 
He tried to, you know, calm him down. He's like, look, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to come here and upset you. I just came to see May. I want to say goodbye to her. And Peter's like, why? She's not your aunt. You're a clone. You're, you know, you're a freak. And he starts like, you know, losing his mind. Uh, Cause every time the clone situations and the Jackal popped up, I mean, he, it really got Peter worked up probably because Jackal did a lot of horrible things to Peter and also cloned Gwen. Uh, so anytime he saw a clone, it really got under his skin. Uh, even more so sometimes than seeing Green Goblin. It really just activated rage in Peter Parker. And he, you know, was like, you know, just do what you need to do here and get out of my town. So Ben is like, fine, you know, this is your town, you're Spider-Man here, I'll just go back and disappear into the wild. I, you know, I've been on the road for five years uh, and I, you know, I've been living in, no one's known I existed. I've taken the name Ben Riley, which is named after his uncle Ben and Aunt May's maiden name, which is Riley. So he came up with Ben Riley and he's been using that name on the road. And so now he's back in New York and he's like, all right, I gotta leave. But before he does, uh, someone, uh, this woman actually is about to commit suicide and she's on top of the bridge that Gwen Stacy died on and she is getting ready to jump off and this is just him you know he's going around on his last day in New York and he's like I want to go to some places that will you know I have memories of even if they're not my memories you know they're they're Peter's memories and they mean something to me too so I'm gonna go visit these places and when he gets to the bridge he sees this woman and she's about to drop and uh, he's like I gotta act I gotta do something so luckily you know he has some web shooters things that he, he's been working on over the years he's been tinkering stuff uh, using cheaper materials whatever he can find uh, doing internships at different places trying to get chemicals whatever he can and he's actually improved on some of the designs of the spider-man web shooters and other things uh, because he's had nothing but time on his hands unlike Peter who has to constantly fight villains and stuff you know Ben had a lot of downtime uh, so he has his web shooters and he swings in and the girl drops he comes right in and catches her and uh, and saves her life so uh, and he does it by doing a different tactic than the way Peter caught Gwen so when he catches this girl her it's not an abrupt uh, stop and her neck doesn't snap and you know that whole thing uh, so he you know he's sh showing that he's learning uh, from past m mistakes and, and past sins maybe and uh, and he's like okay um, you know maybe I am needed here spider-man can't be everywhere at once and uh, maybe I can do at least a little bit of good and right around the time he's Thinking about making this decision to stay, he sees an, uh, you know, a news broadcast of Venom being back in town. And he's like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is my last gift to Peter Parker, I guess. Like, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to take down the villain he never could beat. I'm going to fight Venom and bring him down once and for all. Because right now, Carnage is locked up in Ravencroft. Uh, you know, he doesn't know about the other five symbiotes. So he's, as far as he knows, it's just Venom. And he's like, all right, I'm gonna go deal with this guy. So he goes into a place that he saw earlier in the mall. He saw like a hoodie with a spider on it, a blue hoodie, and he puts that on over some red tights that he has and he becomes the Scarlet Spider. Uh, and that is like the first issue. And then he goes off and basically is just hunting uh, Venom. Uh, for the most part and he finds him pretty quickly uh, venom is not a hard guy to find so in the second part of the storyline they get into it big time and they beat the crap out of each other and and venom actually gets a really deep cut blow on ben's stomach like ben was in way over his head he did not expect that venom would move like him uh you know have all spider-man's powers in a way and also just be like tougher and meaner and then also the fact that venom doesn't even care he's like look you're a spider fake that's all i know you are you're not even spider-man and uh so i have no deal with you i'm gonna kill you like i, I made a deal with spider-man i won't kill him as long as he stays out of my way but i didn't make a deal with you so i'm gonna eat your brains <laughs> so the two of them get into it and ben gets hurt really badly uh and at the same time uh, donna diego scream shows up in the storyline and you find out that she like eddie brock who came to new york from san francisco looking for answers she also is looking for answers and she believes venom might have some because you know her and the other four symbiotes spawned from venom so she goes to him and says look whether you like it or not we're kind of your children and we you you may have answers that you know we need uh, and if you don't the symbiote might so like can we talk and venom's like no like get away from me I, i'm here to destroy all symbiotes and then you know and then maybe find uh, you know uh, and find answers of the real symbiotes like where i come from but all my offspring like we got to take care of them like i don't know why venom's all, all of a sudden on this war path against all of his offspring uh, but he is because at the end of Knights of Vengeance, he was like, he seemed sympathetic towards the fact that there were other symbiotes out there. And he was like, oh, maybe there's more 
like me because you know planet of the symbiotes hasn't happened yet so he's like oh maybe there's more things out there like me and uh, i should go find them and so he comes back to new york and now he wants to kill them so i don't know what changed in his motivation uh but something changed and so he's like you know not having it with donna diego he knocks her away and then she gets you know she knocks him back and then uh you know scarlet spider knocks venom into the, off the bridge and into the water uh and they they fought back towards like the you know the docks and the bridge and stuff uh so you know scarlet spider gets one up on him there but he does have a big wound so he goes back to his like apartment that he's kind of slumming it at right now and uh he is bleeding all over the place and one of his neighbors a girl named gabrielle greer she finds him and they kind of start setting up a possible love interest for ben even though they go in a different direction later on they do set up gabrielle and some people in his you know building some of the tenants in his building uh as people that could help him and they bring him to uh the hospital and this was a great time actually to mention ken ellis who is a reporter working for the Daily Bugle, who is trying to outshine, he's trying to get a Pulitzer and outshine um, uh, Ben Urich, uh, who has done a lot of great stuff with Daredevil and a lot of superheroes in New York. And he wants to outshine him, get a Pulitzer of his own, and uh, and be a real tough investigative journalist. And he meets uh, Scarlet Spider pretty early on, and even names him Scarlet Spider in the, in the newspaper, and, uh, and says, like, you know, I think I can help you get information. If you give me some information, I could probably help you find Venom. And they kind of try to work together on stuff. Uh, but uh, Scarlet Spider doesn't trust him right away, but he's also like, hey, this is, I mean, this is the only person I know. I saw his name in a byline, and I just came by to... Um, communicate with him because it's not a guy who knows Peter Parker that well so I could probably you know uh, communicate with him and he won't try to put two and two together or anything so uh, so Ben you know decides to make a deal with him well Ken Ellis obviously wants to know who Ben is he wants to know who's under the Scarlet Spider costume so he put out a you know a, a hit to all of his people in hospitals because he has sources all over the place all over the city and he says look if someone comes in with a stomach wound a male in like his mid-20s comes in with a stomach wound call me and so when Ben gets taken to the hospital by his neighbor he gets Ken Ellis gets a call and he's like, "All right, I'll be right there." And he comes in and right before he gets there, Spider Man uh, or Scarlet Spider, he has Scarlet, you know, his spider sense goes off. He's like, "Oh, someone's coming to you know find out something about me." He jumps up in the air vents and disappears. So Ken Ellis doesn't find out who he is. And throughout the story, Ken Ellis becomes really obsessed with figuring it out. But then J Jonah Jameson comes in and says, "Look." I know all about obsession. I know all about obsession with spider type characters. Like, don't let it get to you. Don't let it skew your writing. Uh, tell the story and and be truthful. He's like, I've had enough instances in this newspaper where the truth wasn't told and especially about spider characters uh no matter how badly i want them to be bad um give them the benefit of the doubt he kind of like talk, gives them like a little pep talk like that like try to be you know don't let your bias take over like you know try to be a better reporter than some of the other people here so ken ellis is like you know what i'll take that to heart so he kind of has a change of heart in the story um he still sticks a little to the aggressive side throughout most of the story, but at the towards the end, he does kind of come around and write a really good story about Scarlet Spider and how the New York needs more selfless people, you know, protecting it. And so, uh, so yeah, so Spider-Man comes in, or Scarlet Spider, I should say, I keep calling him Spider-Man. Uh, he was Spider-Man for a while, and if so, if you're wondering why I make that mistake, it's because Ben actually did become Spider-Man for a while, and I just, I'd call him Spider-Man sometimes. Uh, but Ben... Uh, you know, he with his wound, he's healed up now. He's making new web cartridges. He's created this thing called impact webbing, which is like the cylinder ball. And when it hits its target, it spreads out in like in an insane way, and it's unpredictable. It goes in all directions, and the more you fight it, the tighter and tighter it gets. So he created this new thing called impact webbing, and then created these things called stingers, which are like these six-inch nails that shoot out of his gauntlets. And his web shooters on the outside of his his costume, so like they're these like little pellet things all around. Uh, so like kind of like Batman's like. You utility belt there's little things in each one so uh he's ready for battle and he goes in and he takes the fight to venom and donna diego shows up and she starts getting uh beaten really badly by venom venom's about to kill her and scarlet spider shows up and saves her and he's like i don't know why i'm saving this other symbiote but she seems semi-reasonable she's trying to talk to venom so maybe she's a good person still, uh, but Venom's not having it, and he's losing his mind right now. And I think it's because the symbiote is irritated by the presence of Ben. It knows that there's something familiar about him. It knows that he's he feels like Peter Parker whenever he's around. So the symbiote recognizes that, but it doesn't. It's it's also fighting against it because it knows it's not Peter. Uh, so he they get into it. Like that's that's one of the things they get into is uh and why one of the reasons Venom acts so erratic sometimes in his storyline is because he instantly feels that connection with Ben, but he knows it's not the same connection that the suit had with with peter uh so it irritates the crap out of the symbiote because it's confused and it doesn't know why it you know this is the thing it doesn't really understand what clones are obviously at this point so um 
the two of them get in it. Uh, there's a guy named Kane that shows up. Uh, he's watching Ben. Uh, he's a, an assassin for hire. Uh, his, you know, he leaves this mark called the Mark of Cain on people's faces. And once he kills a couple of mob guys who were trying to hire him to do something, he's like, nope, I saw this article about Scarlet Spider in New York. I think it's uh, Ben, this guy that I've been trying to kill for years. So I'm going to go kill him on my own. No money required. Uh, and you guys just stay out of my way. And they're like, no, we, we want to hire you for a job. So you got to stay here and do the job. So you know, Kane kills all of them. And once they're, you know, their faces, like, you know, once the cops show up to see all their dead bodies, uh, they contact a police officer in Salt Lake City where Ben and Kane lived for a short time uh, because Kane has been hunting Ben for the past five years. He wants to kill all the clones of Spider-Man for some reason. And we'll get into all that in the Scarlet Spider series. Uh, but Kane, uh, you know, left a, a mark on these, on these mob bosses. And so now some police officer from back in Salt Lake City is like, his name's like Detective Raven or something. He's like, all right, now I know who killed my, my, the guy who killed my partner is now killing people up near New York. So I'm going to take a leave of absence basically and I'm going to go and investigate this off the clock and off my you know on my own personal time and see if I can find the guy who killed my former partner uh, so he you know goes off to New York so all these characters are descending on New York Grim Hunter who's the son of Craven the hunter uh, he shows up and he's ready to hunt spider people in New York and of course he's going to come across Ben at some point so all these characters are converging while while Ben is trying to just take down one enemy Venom he just wants to beat Venom and leave New York uh, so this final battle is intense. They get into it really badly, and uh, and Scarlet Spider shoots uh, the the impact webbing into Venom's mouth, separates the symbiote from the human face of Eddie Brock, and then shoots six stingers or five stingers into his face, and then he, I think he even punches one into him, and then starts beating the crap out of Eddie Brock. He's just bop bop bop, just hitting him left and right, left and right, and he's just like he's like don't pass out, don't pass out, just keep punching, keep punching, and he's breaking Eddie's nose and busting his eye, and he's just punching, 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 um, and he just keeps beating until Venom falls. And this is like literally the first time that Venom has been beaten physically to a pulp. Uh, all the other times he's been hit with gamma rays or, or sound waves or, or you know whatever or fire, but Ben just takes it to him and Ben just doesn't give up. He just shows that Peter Parker heart of not giving up that he has inside of him. Whether he's a clone or not, he shows it big time. And he takes down Venom and Venom drops to the ground and then once Eddie's unconscious, the symbiote comes up and it tries to connect with Ben because it's like, look, there's something familiar about you. We, You feel like Peter Parker. We're going to connect with you. We're, and it starts getting into his mind and whispering. And he starts fighting back. He's like, no, get out of my head. And then the symbiote like collapses from exhaustion, from trying to connect with Ben and failing at it. And it collapses. And then right when that happens, the guardsmen or the jury, like the green armored Iron Man guys, they show up. And they're like, you know what? We've, been, we've wanted this guy for a while. We've caught him a few times. He's got away. He's killed one of our own. Uh, can we take him? And Scarlet Spider's like, yes. Like, take him, put Eddie in one chamber, and put the symbiote in another, and drive them to opposite sides of the United States. And so that's what the guardsmen do. And they drive them, you know, they go in opposite directions. The trucks go in opposite directions. And, uh, and that is the setup for separation anxiety. So Don Diego, she's still out there. She sees Venom get taken away, and she decides to follow in pursuit to see where Eddie Brock gets taken, uh, hoping that she can maybe still get some answer from him uh, later on. So we'll talk about separation anxiety in a future episode, uh, in a couple episodes probably from now, and wrap up this trade paperback. But let me know what you guys think of this. Uh, obviously, at the end of this, Ben is like, all right, I'm good. I did. I beat the one villain. Now I can, I can leave and I think everything will be all right. So I'll, I'll, you know, hang out for a few more days and then I'll, I'll take off. And of course, now there's all these characters, Kane, Grim Hunter, everyone's coming to New York and Ben is not going to have a choice and he's going to have to stay, uh, because of sins from Peter's past and sins of his own. And, uh, and we'll get into all that when we talk about Scarlet Spider in that series, probably in a couple weeks. So just be patient with me and I'll definitely get that episode out to you guys. Uh, but let me know what you think of this. Are you, you know, are you excited? Are, do you know who's Scarlet Spider is. Um, are you, you know, if you do, what is your favorite moment of his, you know, history and his moments in comics? Did you like this battle? This is one of my favorite, favorite moments in Spider-Man comics is when he fights Venom and takes him down like this. It showed right away that he was a hero that is worth, you know, standing behind. And I didn't care that he was a clone. Between him and Peter, he was my favorite Spider-Man during this point in the comic books. So I want to know what you guys think. Let me know down below. As always, thanks for watching my channel. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.